number one you'll see a, a trail my booster pack will not start it santa found that there is damage not just to the bed but also to the spring the bracket to the filters is broken you have a fuel filter and it looks like a water separator the brackets broken the shield for the gas tank is broken engine power is reduced no man no no what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds today we're doing something a lot of you have asked me to do for a long time and that is go back to the salvage auction buy something and attempt to make it home so here we are at insurance auto auctions picking up probably the biggest vehicle i've ever picked up this is a 2011 Chevy 3500 Dually long bed lifted on 35s. We're gonna get this thing out of here real quick. IAA is actually closed, but they're working with me today on Saturday to come pick this thing up. We've looked at it, I did a video about it. Other than looking at it here, I have no idea if this thing's gonna run and drive back home, but we're gonna try to make it. And to help us with the journey today, we have Michael from Santa's Workshop. How is everybody doing? How you doing? I'm doing great. Well, we just rode here together, so I knew he was all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at Insurance Auto Auctions here on I-35 in Oklahoma City, and it's Saturday, and they were so cool yesterday to say, you know what, you can come get it Saturday, we'll let you in, we'll let you get it, and uh, you're gonna follow me. He's gonna follow me in the Ram, and uh, we're gonna see if we end up having to tow it. We may have to tow the Chevy with a Ram. You did bring a strap, didn't you? No. Oh. Well, you just push it with a bumper. Or wait, that'd be pushing it with my headlights, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't we get back there and uh, take a look at this thing? See what we can do. All right. Well, we're off to a bad start. It's fixable. Yeah. Should we uh, go over there and... <laughs> Number one, you'll see a, a trail. That's diesel. Yeah. Pretty major. Go-go juice. A uh, pretty, pretty major leak. Um, my booster pack will not start it which that's my old one um the other one right. started but that one's years old so ah. it's probably just down on juice but uh <laughs> santa found that there is damage not just to the bed but also to the spring and i didn't see that see that spring is folded up so what happened according to carfax is this thing hit a parked car so they must have been backing up he must be going back at a pretty good pace to bend that spring. <laughs> Supposedly, it hit a parked car, and this has been pushed forward, not a ton, but definitely a little bit, and it bent that top spring, which honestly, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Now, we was checking the alignment, matching up with the, uh, the center bump, Yep. and it still looks right at it. It's a little bit lower on this side. What is going to be a problem is we have, uh, well, you see all the oil absorbent there. The bracket to the filters is broken. You have a fuel filter and it looks like a water separator. The bracket's broken. The shield for the gas tank is broken. Um, and we are leaking. We're leaking diesel pretty good, and that's with it not pressurized, not running. Right. So that's what's concerning me is when we start it up. How's it going to do? Yeah, is it going to gush? Um, so we're already, like, there's, we're not driving this right now. Uh, the gentleman that's helping us out, he had to go back and get a booster pack, which sucks. He's walking. He had to walk all the way back there. Um, boy. <laughs> I missed that, I guess, when I was out here looking at it. Well, I mean, we looked. I mean, there's a small spot of where it was leaking. Yeah. But not that big. Yeah, not like this. And I, I, I had the truck running for quite a while. I was out here filming, and it was running, and I was revving it. Um, there was a small spot, but this, this is, uh, this is, yeah, it didn't do this. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. But uh, we're going to wait for him to get back with the jump pack. And then I guess we'll cripple it to the parking lot. And once it's in the parking lot, we can figure it out from there. Right. All right. Well, we are in the truck. What do you think? I like it. Uh, we do have a slight problem. 
I think it leaked all of its fuel. <laughs> it has none. Oh boy. Yeah, let's get out. I'll crack this window. Let's take a look at how that fuel filter is looking with it running. And we'll see what we think. Oh. It actually don't look like it's leaking now. Oh, zip ties. Oh, I'll take these, man. Oh, wow. Do you think these will hold it? <laughs> How do you work those? You just slide them in and pull them tight? Just pull around and it's about 250. Okay. So it wants to hold up 250. Which one would you rather use? Either or. Either or? I think these would be fine. Okay. Man. Huh. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank Avery, you. Yes, right? Thank you so much, Thank man. You. I appreciate you helping us out today. All right, well, I'll shut it off. I'll climb up under there. We'll see if we can't. Uh... Oh, I'm afraid to shut it off. Don't shut it off. Yeah, so what are we going to do? <coughs> we got the jump pack won't start it. We're out of diesel. The fuel filter is hanging out from under it. This is not a good start. Why don't I get under there? Let me try to strap this thing on, get it secured. Okay. If you could Google a diesel station. Well, I know that way is a path of truck stops. How far? Uh, probably about four miles, five miles. There's a gas station down this way, about a mile. Okay. But I don't know if it's got diesel. Let's reconvene here in just a few minutes, guys. Let me strap this up. Let's see if they got diesel a mile down this way because we're racing against the clock right now. And if it dies, we may not get it running again. Right. We're sending it, guys. Maiden voyage to hell with it. The, uh, the gentleman here, Avery, he hooked us up with some metal straps. We strapped the fuel filters up underneath. And it uh, looks like there's a Conoco seven tenths of a mile just down this road here. I think we can get there this way, assuming we don't run out of gas, guys. We're literally, we're fighting the clock here. We've never had this thing on the road before. Don't know a damn thing about it. We're just, we're just going to do it to it. So if we run out of gas, we're going to be in big trouble because if this engine dies, we ain't going to be able to restart it. My jump pack is not going to start this back up. And we will be stuck on the side of the daggum road. It's moving. The steering wheel is sideways. Wow. I think she's in desperate need of an alignment. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I... Wow. That's pretty rough. Uh, so far, we're doing 40 miles an hour. She's cruising. It's not the worst. It's definitely a little, definitely a little bumpy in here. There's the Conoco. My God, we might actually make it. We might actually make it. Come on, this guy's turning. Let's just hope we get a light. There we go. We got a green light. If we can make it. And then pray to God they got some diesel, man. Don't turn red. Don't turn red. Don't turn red. Come on, come on, come on. Where's the diesel? I don't see any diesel. Oh, no. Oh, it's over here. It's over here. I got you. Guys. Oh, wow. This thing is a behemoth. This thing, this thing is a freaking tank, man. By golly, George. That's a diesel pump. I think I think we're gonna be okay. Let's put some uh, some fuel in this thing, and let's cross our fingers it ain't gonna leak anymore. All right, we made it. We made it. How much do you think this thing held? Uh, twenty three fifty. From empty? From empty. No. Oh wait, twenty three fifty seven. <laughs> you know why? Because it ain't empty. Nope. 
So unfortunately, here, here's what I think happened. At some point, I do believe that a forklift got a hold of this um, because I had this thing running and running and running, revving it and running. It never dumped. You saw the mess out there. It yeah. dumped fuel everywhere. So the fuel filter bracket is completely snapped off from the cross member. The bracket is broken. I'll probably need to find a whole nother assembly. I think a forklift got a hold of it and uh, and broke it. Yep. And here's the thing. I could stand here and cuss and scream and it's the worst. Listen, it's a job. And I'm not saying that he did it either. Avery, I don't know who did it, but somebody lifted this truck up to move it at some point. Well, and I do believe that that's what happened. If you remember, they said it was too big for their force. Yeah. So I bet you when they went to move it, they found out they couldn't move it with their fork. And if they couldn't move it with their fork, the uh, tow company said, no, nope, I ain't taking that. Yeah, I, I do believe that whatever happened under here is an accident. I'm not mad about it, no. like not at all. But here's the thing. I swear that when I filmed this truck, uh -huh. it had like half a tank of diesel in it. Let me show you from, from 20, $23 to $25, it's empty. Still leave. Which means the wiring is broken. Yeah. That goes to the sending unit. And it's, it's entirely possible because, you know, the wires probably run right through that filter. Uh-huh. Yep. So there is some new damage. It's uh, one of those things. It happens. People make mistakes. Accidents happen. I'm not mad. It's disappointing. Right. It's unfortunate. But now we know it's got a full tank of diesel. So it had to have had about three quarters of a tank, like I said, because it only held $23. Right. So uh, the goal right now is let's take the back roads. Oh, I need to put tags on it. Okay. Why don't we, uh, where, where are you right here? Let's get the tags out of that truck. Let's put them on this okay. and we'll take the back roads and try to get it to my house. And if we can get it to my house and it's okay, then we can head on down to buyers okay. and drop it off at AR headquarters. Or hell, I might keep it at home. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. We'll figure it out. Let's do it. Okay, on the road again. Let's see, uh, let's see how this thing does because we've got a bit of a drive. Get back to my place. This is, uh, it takes me, if I take the back roads, and sometimes I do just after a long day and being out here filming and everything, sometimes I really do just take the back roads because I enjoy it a little bit more than taking the interstate. But it takes me, I'd say probably 45 minutes to an hour to get back to my place taking the back road. So we're gonna hit the road and we're gonna find out what happens. All right, listen to this thing run. <laughs> oh, wow. Get it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, man. She sounds mean. Um, surprisingly, I mean, and honest God, I am, I am very, very surprised about this. Uh, other than the fact that cop is staring at me like, "What the hell are you doing?" Take a look at the gauges. Everything looks good. We're going the speed limit, no issue. Even with that axle slightly tweaked because of the uh, the springs. It's going down the road just fine. I mean, except for the steering wheel. The, st the steering wheel is a tad bit off. Um, there is a little more damage under here that we're going to have to address for sure. But surprisingly, it rides down the road at speed just fine. Like, not an issue at all. Cruise control? Let's try it. It's not rolling coal. And we just set the cruise control. Will it work? I don't think it works. No. Or wait, wait, wait. We'll see, but I don't think I don't think the cruise control is working, guys. Let's see what happens. No. Cruise is not working. God, it sounds obnoxious. I 
low key guys, I kind of love this truck <laughs> already. It's gonna need a little work. It's gonna need more work than I thought it was. Obviously, we got our work cut out for us. We're gonna have to replace the spring on the driver's side. We've got some, uh, some broken pieces underneath to address, an alignment issue to address. Looks like it's probably gonna need a bed as well. But I mean, it's a little rough. But at the end of the day, I think I, I think I got a pretty good deal on it. You guys tell me what you think. My winning bid was something like $12,000. So my winning bid was $12,100. And out the door it came out to like $14,365, something like that. Uh, and I know what you're thinking. That's a lot of money for a wrecked truck with some problems. I'll agree with you. You're right, it is. But at the same time, I did my research before I placed my bids on this truck, and what I found was that most of these trucks in stock form, some of them had accidents, some of them didn't. You're looking at a low end of about $25,000 with 160,000 miles on the odometer. That's on the low end, about $25,000. So I got to thinking, I was like, really, even if we mark this at the low end, and we're looking at $25,000. I got this thing out the door for $11,000 under what you could buy a stock one of these for. And some of you are gonna love it, some of you are gonna hate it. And believe me, I understand both sides. I also love and hate the truck. I think the truck is awesome. It's jacked up. We're gonna take a closer look at the suspension when I get back to the house. But yeah, I love it, the Rhino lining, you know, to each their own, personal preference. I think it looks all right. The pink, purple color, no, that's that's gotta go. That's gotta go uh, pretty quickly. And we got a lot of work to do to this. Obviously, I'm gonna have to put some money into it. But I think when you're talking about a stock version of this truck for at least $25,000, and I managed to get one that's like lifted with wheels and tires and all this good stuff, I think, honestly, this was a hell of a score. This was an absolute steal of a deal. And personally, I love the truck. We're gonna have to change the color of it, but I think this truck is the bomb. Now, most of you watching my channel know that when it comes to diesels, I always buy a Ram. In my opinion, the Ram with the Cummins is about as good as you can get when you want a nice balance between reliability and cost of maintenance. When you start getting into these V8 diesels, I mean, you got a whole new layer of issues because you've got two extra cylinders, you've got two cylinder heads instead of just one straight six cylinder head. It, you get into, a, it becomes a lot more difficult to work on and what that means is when something does go wrong or you have to have maintenance performed on it that you can't do yourself, well, it's gonna cost you extra. There's gonna be more labor time involved with repairing things and replacing things on this truck. So I'm just not the biggest fan of V8 diesels, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. This is my very first Duramax diesel. My first, and so far, I love the power. This thing, it gets down the road with no issue at all. The exhaust sounds, It sounds so dang good. I think this truck has a lot of potential, guys. I do, I think we've got a lot of potential. By the way, air conditioning works like it should. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I have flipped to the dark side. I love this Duramax diesel. And if I remember correctly, the Allison transmission that's made into this, obviously Allison, everybody should know that name, industrial quality transmission in this thing. Um, the transmission fluid, you should be able to climb under it. It has a plug like the oil pan. You should be able to drain your fluid and then fill it back up. And here's the best part, the filter on these, again, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong, but I think the filter on these is external. I think it has a big spin-on filter, just like an oil filter on an engine. So you can do your fluid and your filter without really getting messy at all. This truck is, I may have been screwing myself. I really love this truck. I can't believe I didn't give one of these a chance earlier on.
So here's one of the things I just found out about it. It has an exhaust brake. I didn't even realize that. Uh, it has been so long since I've had a diesel. I can't tell you how nice an exhaust brake is when you have a load behind you. Like you got a car hauler and you got a heavy car and you're getting down the road. Man, that exhaust brake is a blessing, especially if you're going down like a like the Ozarks or something. Having that exhaust brake, being able to just let off the gas and let the engine do a lot of the heavy braking for you, super nice feature. Now, I haven't been able to figure out where everything is in this truck yet because obviously I'm driving, but the exhaust brake, I saw that sucker sitting down there and I just had to play with it. I'd love to be able to click on my trip and reset it so I could start seeing what kind of mileage I'm putting on it. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know where the buttons are to scroll through the mileage and the trip. All the gauges look good. The oil pressure is right around 60 when I'm going. Temperature is at 210. Voltage looks good. Unfortunately, the fuel gauge, well, as we know, that's, that's broken. But so far, cruising the back roads, she's doing just fine. Now, if I decide to take this down to AAR headquarters, try to get down to buyers, that's a different story because the speed limits out there are 60 and 65 miles an hour. That's a big difference uh, when you're talking about doing 35, 45 miles an hour here in the city. So I think we're going to go ahead and try to carry this thing down there. And uh... <laughs> oh, it's obnoxious. It's absolutely obnoxious and I love it. So this whole time, I thought the cruise control didn't work. Oh, there's a sheriff right there. And as it turns out, if you could see the dashboard there, you see the green light? You know what that means? The green light there means that the cruise control is functioning properly. That's right, it works. I don't know what I was doing wrong earlier, but the cruise control absolutely functions. I also learned something else just a couple minutes ago. I've been doing about 10 miles over the speed limit the whole time without realizing it. My speedometer shows I'm going just a tad bit over 50, probably like 52 miles an hour. However, my GPS speedometer here says that I'm actually going 60. Yeah. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. That's another thing we're going to have to deal with. Probably getting a tuner so that we can tune the proper size, uh, these size tires into this and hopefully that will recalibrate the speedometer and have it working properly. So far, other than the steering wheel being crooked, we are going 60 miles an hour, and the truck is just cruising down the road with no issue at all. So I've made an executive decision. We are going to get on the Kickapoo Turnpike. The speed limit is 80 miles an hour. I figure do or die, man. This whole video has been about finding something that we know nothing about, and just sending it. So, let's send it. Let's see how she does, if she'll even do 80 miles an hour. We're at 73, and I'm not flooring it. And we're doing 80. And now the cruise control won't work. <laughs> no way. Let me try this again. No, the cruise doesn't work. I swear to you, I had the cruise control working, but now when I push it, it does nothing. Huh. Okay. So the cruise control is a little flaky. Whatever. As you can see, I'm steady cruising. 77, 76. And again, I'm a little surprised, but you can clearly see me going down the road here. My voice isn't choppy. The truck isn't vibrating like crazy. It's on pretty aggressive tires. So it's got a little rougher ride than normal, but aside from that, nothing. Un freaking believable again guys i think i got a great deal on this truck well would you look at this we made it i'm i'm probably as surprised as you guys are man what a tough old truck uh i'm tempted 
to get San out here, see if he wants to take it for a spin, and uh, we can see what he thinks about it. Oh man, yeah, I love it. Whoa, You're man! You're gonna fall in love with that thing. Ain't I already you? did. <laughs> you could tell. You could tell. You got to drive it, man. Oh man! You want to take it for a spin? Well, we're going down the bars, baby. Yeah. How you doing down there? Okay. How did it look going down the road? Um, you were uh, grabbing just a little. Really? Just a little. We had her at 80. I mean, I was going, I, I didn't realize the speedometer is 10 off. Oh, yeah? So when I'm going 50, I'm going 60. 60 and 70, and uh, apparently I'd been speeding a little bit without realizing it. Well, I was following you, so. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, would you look at this truck. I almost. I'm gonna shut it off and see if it'll fire back up. Okay. One thing I want to tell you. Yeah. Whoever did the tuning on that knew what they were doing. Because it doesn't roll coal. You have absolutely no smoke coming out. We're of gonna change that. Oh come on. I'm gonna buy a tuner. We're gonna no. be we're gonna be hitting the buttons and just rolling coal on every. Yeah, I was disappointed. I was hitting the throttle, man. And it's like no coal. <laughs> It's got plenty of power though. Oh yeah. Plenty of power. I mean, this thing gets out of its own way like nobody's business. Yes, it does. I really, it doesn't ride bad. Once you're on a decent road, it actually rides pretty good. Right. Steering wheel sits 45 degrees-ish well, off. There's a reason for that. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe there's a, well, yeah, yeah, that's, that, right. that's true. That's well, true. Well, I mean, your, your rear end's this way, so it's gonna be walking over that way, so you're having to compensate. Yeah. And another thing, you can see the bed, it's tilted. So it's dropped down a little <laughs> bit on this side. Because of that spring. Right. And that, that's another thing that'll cause it to yeah. be wonky. Well, I'd love to get that cap off of it. Look at that. I think with the cap off in a different color, like maybe murdered out black or something. Yeah. I think it'd look freaking sick. This pink's got to go. Green. Green. We'll see. Jessica's, <laughs> Jessica wants black. She, oh, well, okay. But I was thinking green myself. I was thinking like a lime green would just really be loud and obnoxious. I was thinking, you know, just like a forest green or something. Okay, a dark green. Well, let's check out this suspension real quick. For those of you that haven't seen this truck, I have priced some of this stuff and uh, parts for this thing. The parts that were installed on this, crazy expensive stuff, guys. Um, so we'll start with the wheels and tires. We have some really aggressive, these are very aggressive tires. I don't want to know how much the tires cost. These are Crosswind MTs 35 by 12.5 R22s. So those are some pretty big XD wheels right there. And then behind the wheels, you've got Fabtech suspension. You've got Dirt Logic reservoirs for these crazy dual shocks on both sides, which is sold, I believe, by Fabtech. Moving around to the front, you have this giant boondock bumper um, with these. You need, a, you need a tow? You need me to pull something for you? Wow. Um, you know what I haven't found is the lights. Yeah, I was looking for that one ago. Yeah, I want to I wanna look again and see if maybe we can find where the... Because it's got the lights here and it's got the lights up top. I'd love to find those. Let's see what kind of lights we got here. These are called All Natural Concepts for those lights. And those lights look like they are the same up there as well. Yeah, All Natural Concepts. Let's see what else we got. Over here, we've got our, I don't know if you want to call these running boards. These are more rock sliders. These say Magnum on them. Of course, coming back to the back, well, you've got the dual wheels. Surely they're not both. No, the inside one is kind of just a traditional inside wheel. They stuck with the, the nice wheels on the outside. XD series again, 35 by 12 and a half by 22. The exhaust, well, there's the exhaust right there. That sucker is, uh, yeah, she's pushing some, uh, some exhaust out of her, guys. <laughs> You've got your uh, Dirt Logic shock absorbers down here as well in the back and then you have this uh is this the same bumper that's on the front boondock yeah boondock, yeah. boondock bumper back here all natural concepts what it looks like is that somebody took this truck to a shop 
because all the lights match, right. the bumpers and stuff match. I think somebody took it into a shop and they used all their like in-house yeah. parts to, what is this? Huh. Yeah, don't I know. I saw that swinging. Looks like we got a three inch receiver. Oh wow. That's a, I actually have a three inch uh, kit for this. Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. I put it up because I got rid of my, uh, my 3500 ram right didn't need it anymore so and of course i should have a seven pin right there in the back we've got literally nothing this was somebody's shop truck i think like a it was definitely a work truck in fact i think we may have found out who it belonged to it says scorpion coatings of oklahoma with a phone number huh Kind of makes you wonder if that's who this truck belonged to, because the whole truck is coated. Wouldn't that make sense if they used their own coating on it? Yeah. I wonder if I sent it back to them when it's done. Oh, wow. You know what that's for, don't you? It's an adapter. Yep. I'm yeah. I'm laying on the side of the road. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I want this cap off. I like to be able to see out the back when well, I'm driving. Well, when, you you was, know? when you was hitting bumps, that thing was coming up. Uh-huh. Well, there, look how there ain't none up here. Right. It fell off. Yeah. Sitting over there. You've even got a remote power outlet right here, too, in case you're going to. It's got a flip up, one of those uh, hitches. Right. That's a gooseneck, right? Gooseneck, yes. Yeah, it's got a, go a flip up uh, gooseneck hitch back there. And this, only one side closed because the other side, I guess, had a key that. Well, Oops. It's, uh, the cap is spread out. Probably from the hip. Yeah. Well, see, you can open it. And, uh, oh! Does it actually. It doesn't catch anymore yeah, because of the bed. The cap needs to be squeezed in. Yeah, that cap is going to come off and I'll put it up for sale and, you know, maybe I can get a couple hundred bucks out of it. I don't know. I'll bet you could easily. I don't know what it's worth. So there's all the goodies. The only thing is, we can't find the lights. I can't. I can't imagine where they'd be. Uh, where they'd be hiding. But maybe there's a switch. No, I don't see anything under here. You got all these lights. I'm telling you, somebody. There, <laughs> there's got to be a button somewhere. Oh, it's even got the books. It's got an iPod, iPhone hookup, connector, Dealey LeBob. Yeah, that's crazy. I wonder if there's any uh, wiring under the hood. I don't know. Maybe someone took all the wires out. That's actually kind of sad. If you guys see anything that I may have missed for those lights, let me know. What do you think, Nick? It's something. What do you mean it's something? What does that mean? That doesn't sound good. It's nice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't think he, I don't think Nick likes it. Ah. I don't he's like, yeah, that's something. And look, whatever that is has been unhooked, deleted. Yeah. And then you've got the sinister diesel. I guess it's like a RAM intake type of deal. Yeah. And then you got this little sensor that looks aftermarket. Plugged on here. But I see no wiring for lights. No. That's bizarre. Oh, what is this? Uh, an SMB? Yeah, I bet you that's your real. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. See, it looks like it has some lugs here for lights. Oh no, that's factory, isn't it? But look at this job that they did here. This is all rigged up too. Somebody did that putting extra batteries in because they didn't want to buy the expensive ones. Yeah, I'm sure hoping. Is that an EGR deleting everything? I don't know. There's something up there. I can't see what it is. Hopefully you guys can see it deleted right there. There's a cap on it along with this sinister diesel thing right here. I don't know anything about this stuff, guys, so not a clue. Well... It made it home. I think I'm going to wash my hands, get something to drink. We should see if it's going to start again. Yeah. Let's see if after uh, going on a long drive with those batteries out. I bet they didn't. I'll bet they didn't.
What was that? I'll be. <laughs> I'll be a son of a gun. It fired right up. Oh, it's got heated seats too? Wow. Not bad. You've got your uh, trailer brakes, and then over there it's got it's got exhaust brakes. Oh. I kicked them on and let off the throttle. It was so nice. I, I thought I heard that. Yeah, yeah, I was like, man, that is nice. Um, do we have any wires coming out of these? We have a... Right, right there, right at this end of it. Where? Right underneath by that bracket. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it runs down the pillar. I don't know. That's something we'll have to figure out later, guys. I'm going to go inside, wash my hands, and I guess we'll carry this thing on down to, uh, to AR headquarters. Sounds good. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> surprise, surprise, we are now in Byers, Oklahoma, almost to AAR headquarters. I cannot believe that we jumped in this truck completely unknown to find out that it ended up with a broken fuel filter housing, smashed fuel filter. Uh, it, it wouldn't start with my jump pack. I mean, <laughs> this thing was a complete unknown to us. And by the way, I just checked out the four wheel drive. It works too. Yeah, uh, once this car is out of the way, let me get you guys down here. There's your four by four. Just pull it down, four high. You get an orange 4x4 light on the dash right there. And you can feel it pulling in the steering. It works. We have four-wheel drive. Man. I, I really... I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, wow, that's a big bump. There's my other Chevy right there. It's only right to kind of see them side by side next to each other. Um, I think I want to take this to, I'm, I'm going to go even further. Engine power is reduced. No, man. No, no. I literally just got here. The check engine light came on and now the engine power reduced. Oh, why? You were doing so good. Maybe if you shut it off and turn it back on it'll be it'll be good again yeah no fuel level low it doesn't say engine power reduced this time though that figures man we have driven this yep engine power is reduced we've driven this 64 miles and it did perfect until I pulled up to this house and now it's got a problem. Well, I guess it picked a great place to break down, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, we made it here. It, it, it literally, it literally broke in the in the front yard. <laughs> I, I I can't even. I'm glad I had the camera on because it's like I, I was filming to show that we made it. Right. And then as soon as I pull up, boom! Check engine light. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys right now. I ran the codes. And oh boy, uh, we've got codes for the transmission, Ugh. engine, body control modules. Uh, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make them wait till the next video. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be a cliffhanger. That's what it's gonna be. It's a cliffhanger. Uh, I've read the codes and I think I already know what it is. Yeah. Um, and I will also say this. I'll give you guys this. It ain't gonna be cheap. No. Gosh, no. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things that comes with the territory when you buy used vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what do you guys think? Santa, what do you think of it? I, I like it. Do you? It's, it's a beast. It, it's a sucker's wild, man. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that it's pink. But, well. as you said, it used to be red. Santa pointed this out. If you look down here, look at the different color. And look how it turns to purple when you come up where the sun didn't really get to it, yep. it's red. You can also see back in here, it looks a little red too. It's hard to get it on camera there. And it definitely used to be red originally. Yeah. <laughs> so it just faded. Um, man, we got, a, we got a work cut out for us. This is not gonna be that big a deal though. Oh no, gosh uh, no. Bed replacement, couple U-bolts, couple perch bolts. 
whatever's attached, change out the spring. And then of course what's whatever going on there and there. the fuel filter housing and fuel filter shouldn't be hard. Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think that's gonna be too difficult. I still think I, I keep saying I want it for twelve grand because my winning bid was twelve one, but it was right. fourteen like port fourteen three sixty five out the door. I you're not gonna find one of these for under twenty. No. Got, not not like this. Yeah, especially and again I'm talking stock, like one that's like jacked up like this. No man. This thing is well, this thing is awesome. Who, whoever did this did it right. They used all matching parts. Yep. It it was like as you said, they took it to a shop. Yeah. And said, I want this. Do it. I'd love to see if we can eventually figure out the lights. Yeah, I think somebody took it and they spent a lot of money on it. Yeah. Um now what happened to it after? I have no idea. But <laughs> we're gonna come back in another video, we're gonna dig into it. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna I want that camper shell off. That thing I, I hate it. I really hate it. Well, you know what you can do with that? Turn it into a doghouse. Yeah, set it out in the backyard. Roxy would love you. You know, that's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's pink. And look at my beautiful house. It could take away from my property value. I, it kind of matches your trim a little. <laughs> 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 well, guys, I think we're going to get out of here. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Michael from Santa's Workshop. More than welcome. If you don't know who this guy is, which you should by now, please go over to his channel, subscribe, click on one of his videos, leave him a comment, hit his thumbs up button, all of that good stuff. Tell him, hey, man, thanks for coming out. And it was a ride. It was. It was. A, I mean, when we got there, th I'll admit this is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of people saying, I wish you'd go back to doing it the way you used to, where you'd go pick them up. And you know this is why i don't this is this is why i don't anymore because it's you never know what you're going to get when you get we got there it said it was out of diesel yep. the batteries were completely dead my booster pack wouldn't start it, it we had no gas can yeah, yeah pouring deep like it was just it was like oh my god <laughs> what a nightmare i thought we were screwed oh no i did now maybe i should show them a sneak peek of another vehicle that i got delivered Sure. I wish the Porsche showed up, but the Porsche isn't here yet. Aww. Yeah, so that's all right. Um, and I parked I parked it next to, you know, I'm going to call this, and this is a pretty good sized truck, well, but not compared to that one. What's sad is this red is really showing up, that one right now. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> this truck is like, that's a girl's truck. This truck will run over this truck. Yeah. Um, the Bentley, you know... I gotta figure, I gotta, I probably need to get ready to sell that. I don't think I'm, I'm really gonna do much else with it. The Cadillac's going up for sale here real soon, but this, this just showed up. Do you remember these? I had one. Really? I had an SSE. Yeah? White, gray leather. One of my favorite cars ever. I could not pass this car up when I found it at the auction. I overpaid for it, as I always do. The tow truck driver dropped it off. I, I ain't even made a video yet. Oh. I haven't driven it. I cut the keys off. I put them in the house. And I left. So I still got to make a video of this one, taking it for a test drive. I'm probably going to do that another day. I really don't feel like... I don't feel... I got enough going on with that one right now. I don't feel like <laughs> messing with this one right now, too. We got an engine and transmission getting ready to go into Monte Carlo. Yep. There's a lot of stuff going on here. People think that no work gets done here, but <laughs> there's a lot of work getting done here. This weekend is we we've, we've been humping on it. Yeah, uh, I should say we should have a video of the Monte Carlo running with open headers really soon. And I'm half tempted to take it out on the road and oh god, you know, just give it a little. Just take it out that way. <laughs> oh, da you mean out yonder that direction? Yeah, in the direction of the rock thrower. You you might be getting bricks on that one. <laughs> Ooh, I boy, I, let me tell you, after all that work, better not. You better oh. not. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> well, guys, I think we're going to get out of here. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking time to watch my videos. If you enjoy them, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel and please drop your comments below and tell me what you think of my. What you, can you call that a bro dozer? A mall crawler, a pavement princess, a moth maven, a moth maven, <laughs> a moth maven, maven, maven. Yep, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there. I'll catch you all again very soon in the next one.